One of the things that I absolutely love about my Ducati is also one of the things that I kind of fucking hate. Um, and that would be the single-sided swing arm. This is a 55 millimeter nut and it's held on with like 270 newton meters, which um, let me tell you is a lot. Um, you know 170 newton meters is 120 foot pounds. So gigantic, gigantic ass wheel. There's a helmet in comparison. But the reason that we're taking this off is you see these gouges here. And you see my rear hugger is all fucked up. Um, my plate decided that it was going to fall off in the middle of a ride. And it got wedged between there. And I thought I was on fire. So that was interesting. This is my 2016 uh, Ducati Diavel Carbon. Um, I've had this bike the longest of any of my bikes, which is... Well, it's entire life. I have put a total of 26, 27,000 miles on this bike. Um, and it's named the carbon because everything's carbon fiber. Like, everything is carbon fiber. And I have the Termignoni, uh, full exhaust system. Um, Aftermarket suspension, I'm running the Olin's, I don't know if you'll be able to see it back there, um, the Olin's upgrades, um, aftermarket oil cooler, um, what else, the Ducati carbon uh, levers, aftermarket mirrors obviously, um, aftermarket, uh, well, Peg slash rear sets. They sit a little bit lower and a little bit more angled. And then just the uh, the body chassis plugs are an aftermarket Ducati option. So anyways, I usually ran this bike with the Pirelli Rosso 2s and they were my favorite tires. I was running through them extremely quickly. Um, you'll notice there's no chicken strips on this side. Maybe a tiny little bit, but this side has some because, well, I found out that, you know, my $4,000 exhaust scrapes before I actually get to the edge of this tire. So don't flame me. So anyways, I'm usually running the Rosso 2s, but um, I was burning through them really quick and um, was maybe getting five, 6,000 miles out of a tire. And um, I decided to go with the Pilot Power 2CTs and I don't like them at all. Um, they're fine on a 600, but not my favorite on this. So, if you guys didn't know, this is a single-sided swing arm bike. If you look at something like my KTM, there's an axle bolt that goes through on both sides and connects to the swing arm on both sides. By the way, uh, another quick update. I got rid of the CRF 250L because that bike was painfully slow and the suspension was horrible. I've always been a fan of KTMs, so I went with the 500EX CF. Um, much, much happier with this bike. My wife is still rocking and loving the KLX 250L. Um, she doesn't do as much enduro stuff as I do. Um, she kind of just does occasional trail rides I do trail destroying and in the garage we also have the 2019 YZ250F which is my track bike and then the Ducati 390 that I showed you guys in another video and sitting next to it would have been but she's not here my wife's 390 so I mentioned in a moto vlog that I picked up the 390 as a replacement for my Grom just as kind of like a tiny little commuter, but still has enough power to keep up with traffic kind of bike. My wife rode mine once and she sold her Grom and got a 390 as well. Um, hers is reverse color of mine. Hers is white front fairing and then orange uh, front hugger. 
And I think her rear fairings are orange as well. So now we are the humble owners of three KTMs. Um, the only Kawasaki that I would ever allow in my garage would be a KX or a KLX. No offense to you, Kawasaki guys, but um, I'm a big Yamaha and KTM advocate. And as far as street bikes go, I mean, the Ducati Diavel is absolutely incredible. Super, super comfortable, extremely well balanced. Um, despite the gigantic ass rear tire, corners like a champ, and I, I just love it. Uh, kind of feels like riding the Batmobile. But anyways, uh, today's project is getting myself safe again. And again, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell how deep these are just by looking at them, but um, those are some pretty big gouges. Um, the carcass of this tire is, you know, pretty thick. And I'm not super concerned by it. And if honestly, and honestly, if this didn't happen, I would have stuck with these until they were completely dead. But um, the fact that it did was just another reason to upgrade to the Rosso 2s again. And uh, yeah, so on the list of stuff to do today, I have to get this safety retainer clip out. 55 millimeter socket. It's a three-quarter drive, and I don't have a three-quarter drive impact anymore. I lent it to somebody and uh, never got it back. So here's a half to three-quarter, and I'm willing to bet this is going to break before I break that loose. And I couldn't find my 30 millimeter front socket, so I did some math, inch and three sixteenths, um, which is like 30.1 millimeters. So before I get the bike up on a rear stand and everything else, um, and take the exhaust off because the exhaust has to come off for the tire to be able to slide out. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I can break this loose uh, by myself because usually I would have someone here to hold the rear brake for me um, and use a gigantic cheater bar to break this off, but I unfortunately do not have that as an option today. Um, actually, I think the battery in my half drive is fully charged to make sure. Yeah, okay. Cool. First order of business, putting this gigantic adapter on. It's comical how thick, this is like the size of my thumb. <laughs> okay, cool. Next. Our safety clip comes off. I should have. There we go. I usually use a pick for that, but um, yeah, this one doesn't look like it's in that bad of shape. So I'm going to reuse that because I don't want to have to go all the way to Bellevue to get a new one. And here goes nothing. Full disclosure, I did not expect that to break loose. So, now we move to the front, and I'm gonna see if my front axle nut is gonna be a pain in the ass just to make up for the rear. Right, you guys are kind of in the dark, but... Sweet. Okay, so everything broke loose without problem. Now for the ultra scary part, because as I mentioned, Everything on this bike is carbon fiber. If it falls over, that is a very, very expensive oh shit. So let's move my, by the way, all time favorite helmet. I did a review and like a how to video on this helmet um, three or four years ago. This is the AGV Pista. I've owned this helmet longer than I've owned any helmet ever. And honestly, um, it's probably just because it's a $1,300 helmet, but uh, super comfortable. Took a little while to get uh, broken in and used to it, but um, I love it now. 
So, being a single-sided swing arm, our pit bull stand. So the stand goes in our axle like that, all the way through. Tipping the bike gently that way so both wheels touch down. And pushing forward, making sure nothing fell out or off. Okay. So we are up and off the ground. And that's in place. Everything's looking good. Pin is through, nothing slid out. The bike doesn't look like it's tilting too much. So I'm actually gonna get the front up on a front stand. Breaking loose my front pinch bolts before I get it up. Giggity. And these were <laughs> uh, not tight at all. Proof that it was kind of an omen that my plate fell off. Be very bad if my friend Axel decided to go on a vacation and just walk its way off and decide that it was done with me. Front stands kind of royally freak me out. Um, uh, forgot I have to take my brakes off. So it's not actually a norm for most bikes that you have to remove your. Um, front calipers. So for removing brakes, pretty easy. These aren't held on by much torque at all. Spoke a little soon on that. They shouldn't be on there with much torque at all. Yeah, that one's broken loose. On the other side. All right, and before I get these all the way out, make a zip tie contraption. Hold the calipers from just dangling. And find myself a good spot to hang this from, which is looking like it's gonna be my triple tree. So I'm just putting three in line for extra length. And And back down. Can you tell I've done this before? I know exactly how many zip ties to get. So you see that's putting tension on the caliper line. So with that tension on the caliper line, you can take these out. And the fun part of Ducati's is they have a floating rotor, and it's usually not that easy to get past the um, uh, the brake rotor. So that looks like it's going to stay out of the way just fine. But to get this off the line as much as possible, I'm going to go around that side of the banjo bolt. Call that good enough, and we move to the other side. And repeat the same process, which I won't bore you with. So brake hardware is out of the way, and the calipers themselves are out of the way. Now these little rubber arms go under a very expensive bike, and I push down and make sure that they pivot with the fork tubes. God, this is fucking scary. Okay. So, that's all being supported by this stupid little stand. But, they're in the right spot, so that's really all that matters. So, one big tip that I've learned on Ducati's is if you take the axle nut, and get it all the way out, like that. And then put it in like a turn and a half so you're not gonna strip or hurt any threads. And you take, not that, definitely not that. Oh, fuck. 
Nope. Over in my reloading station. Okay. So, really quick, we're gonna make sure that all of these pinch bolts are actually loose. Not all the way out, just loose. That one is still actually tight enough to cause some drag on the axle, which you don't want. It's loose. Loose. And loose. Now, I'm kind of gripping the bike between my knees. There we go. Giving gentle taps. Just tap it in. To get the axle to start poking out. Now we can take this off. Being very careful not to lose any of the aftermarket bling. And, because this one has a cap on the end of it, I should be able to make my life easier by just taking a dowel from this side and driving it through against this cap and predicated upon that cap not popping off, I should be able to get the axle up. All right, the axle was absolutely filthy. We have a wheel spacer. Note on one side we have none. This one just sits flush. Sorry, you're out of frame there. So this is on the left-hand side. And again, just sits flush. So I'm gonna put that on the left. And then this side, we have a much bigger spacer. And obviously the clean side was in. So I'm gonna put that on this side. And we can get it ready to get loaded up. Set it carefully down. And now, exhaust hanger loose. Should be 3 sixteenths, but I'm probably wrong. Ha, nailed it. Gently loosen our hardware. Okay. Don't wanna lose that. And lift up carefully on the exhaust. And pull this bushing through. There we go. And I don't think there's, oh yeah, there is, shit. So these springs are no friend of mine. Let's see if I actually have a spring puller still. I feel like I always buy them, use them once, and then think, oh, I'm not gonna use that for a really long time and throw them away or misplace them. Just look at all this randomness. Creates driver, passenger pegs for the R6. So it'd be really cool to show you guys. An actual spring puller, but I don't know if I actually have one. A random tire spoons. Tan coilover adjusters. Well, poop. Okay, let's do it the hard way. So I'm grabbing a pair of needle nose vice grips, which I'm hoping is going to be enough. So I'm gonna grab spring. Pull back. Oh, that was a lot easier than usual. And I'm actually just gonna leave this dangling so I don't lose that stupid spring. And now, I should be able to just very carefully lock my exhaust off. Hi, Sean, you handsome devil. This side, we have the one nut. Threads. It's dirty, but it looks fine. Threads are all still in good shape. And there should be a retainer and a washer. So here's the washer. This is 
super, super thin brass washer. And my retainer collar. And I'm not pulling this all off at once because I don't like dragging the wheel across the threads. It's a very expensive and not fun job to replace. See this collar is um, conical. Very, very important. And I'll run all those through the wash tub. So I'm lifting up on the wheel as gently as I can. And the rear wheel is off. So you can see where that collar indexes into that groove to make sure that everything is tightened concentrically. This is what the inside looks like. And then we have four spikes that go into those. And then we inspect threads. And they're not perfect, but they actually look okay. Um, another thing to do while you already have the tires off and you're going to a bike shop it anyways So make sure that you have some meat Left on your calipers my rears Actually look Really 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 thin um, Really thin So I will either be buying or ordering, more than likely ordering, um, rear pads. And another thing to address while I have this apart is this part of the hugger got broken when the plate went in there. So I'm going to tell you guys a secret, but you can't tell anyone. Um, I'm just going to take this nut out and I'm going to JB weld the broken pieces of plastic back together because I don't have to buy another whole rear hugger. And we're going to clean all this dead rubber. Look at all this. And clean all that out of there. Inspect chain, inspect slack and clean chain while all this is apart. Yeah, green sleeves is my ringtone. Deal with it. Yay, I found my 10. It doesn't look the greatest, but um, I don't see any actual like gigantic Mars or anything on it that I'm worried about. So I'm gonna call that good. Obviously it's going to get cleaned and lubed. And just in case you were wondering, Bell Ray. Waterproof grease is what I use on everything. So that's the bike torn apart. These are the tires soon to be loaded up. That's a text message. That's my phone, not yours. And uh, I will update when I get back. Half of me is in dirt bike gear, half of me is in street bike gear. And that used to be a roll of toilet paper. Let's hope I didn't lose my gloves. Are they out here? I hope they're out here. All right, so. Um, you'll notice my front stand. Am I recording? I better be recording. So you'll notice my front stand is flipped from the way that it was earlier. And yeah, there's a good reason for that. My bike fell. <laughs> uh, played my brakes, did the rear brakes and the front brakes. And um, yeah, got to Novo Rush today to pick up my tires. And when they said that they were in, they would have them done. Come back in a couple hours, not a big deal. They were like, oh, we actually ordered 
the wrong tires for your bike. And I'm like, oh, how very incredibly you of you. So, um, yeah, it sucked. Big, big bummer. What are you gonna do other than leave a bike on bike stands for much longer than it should be? I really wanted to ride today. And boy, is it ever raining. Okay. Well, this should be interesting. Dirt tires in the rain on a supermoto. I'm an idiot. Uh, helps a lot better if you don't flood your bike first by trying to start it with the damn kill switch on. You guys, this has been my day. Have I ridden? No, no I haven't. I've never ridden dirt bike tires in the rain on the pavement before. On the bright side, um, yeah, I, re I really, really don't have anything. Um, this is a little scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a little scary. I think I was in second. Um, so just accelerating back there. My tire was definitely slipping. So, um... I think I'm gonna mix the idea of... Trying to make it to the shop... On this... And just go pick my wife up on... Uh, or, sorry, in an actual vehicle. So, opening my visor so I can see what the hell I'm doing. What a concept. Hey, what do you do? Oh, I'm a tree farmer. So, you farm trees? Yeah. So, like, do you milk them? Or, no, I just sell them once a year. <laughs> oh, please don't be a chain. Okay, sweet. So if there was a chain between that fence back there, that would have been very complimentary um, as to how my day has been going so far. <laughs> uh, remember I mentioned, actually in a moto vlog that I just started uploading, how I uh, have never ever dropped that Ducati. Um, it's never ever touched the ground before. And just out of my stupid luck, today would be the day. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm gonna leave the part in or if I don't know if he, I was even recording. Where uh, I was talking about how 
Uh, I hated putting bikes on front stands because it was always so sketchy and wobbly. And I've tried every stand. Um, you guys know. You guys noticed that I had the Pitbull uh, rear stand, which is one of the best stands out there. And I gotta say, um, I wasn't too impressed with their front stand. I actually like the trackside stands better. Um, but today was just one of those days that my bike was like, eh, you know what, I'm gonna commit suicide. I was sitting there working on the rear brakes, and thank God the rear didn't fall. Though, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, because knowing my luck, I'm gonna get back home and my bike will be on its side. Um, but it is considerably harder. <laughs> just spinning. Uh, for the rear to fall when it's on a, a single-sided swing arm. So yeah, just sitting there working on the rear brakes and just out of nowhere the bike. Um, you know, I was holding a caliber in my hand and um, wasn't even actually touching the physical bike itself. And it just went plop and just belly flopped onto the ground and my rear stand shot into my toolbox. So I was just sitting there staring at my bike on the ground like, okay, what the F do I do now? Um, you know, even if my wife was home, she's not going to be able to help me pick up a 600 pound bike. So I managed to get the bike up by lifting it and it's kind of one of those like, you know, a mother picks up a school bus to save her children kind of thing. I keep leaving my damn turn signal on. Um, it was definitely one of those like, I'm saving my child, must avenge my child moments, and I don't know how the hell I did it, but I, uh, my left arm went through the fork tubes, and I lifted the bike up with my left arm and, well, my back, um, and got the rear stand back under the forks, all by myself, so, uh, that's my really super cool story for you guys right now. This sucks having my visor up. I'm just catching a whole bunch of rain in my eyeballs because I can't see anything. My new KTM now has 12 miles on it. This bike is freaking awesome by the way. Um, I went to go set the sag on my CR250 and it was when I looked at suspension components after the fact that I was like, oh, okay, I understand why this is so much cheaper than, you know, what I'm used to seeing CRs for, or CRFs. Um, it's not a real CRF, it was a piece of crap. I had like a grand total of maybe, uh, I would say an inch at most of uh, suspension adjustment in the rear. I ended up bottoming the suspension out and uh, I still had like 138 millimeters of sag so there was absolutely no way that the stock suspension was going to be able to cater to me. Um, so I started looking at you know aftermarket suspension options and it was like you know what if I'm gonna buy a dual sport bike, I'm just gonna buy a real du dual sport bike. Raining. <sighs> so, I ended up looking at the cost of everything, and it was like, you know, um, for the cost of upgrading my suspension and um, you know, actually making <laughs> this a formidable bike. Um, so after looking at the cost of everything and realizing that um, it would cost more to make my um, dirt bike looking street bike into an actual dual sport, um, I might as well have just bought a brand new KTM. So I took the CRF back and uh, they were able to actually unwind my 
uh, warranty or something or another um, to where they could actually use that bike as their uh, like showroom bike so that's what they did for me and I actually got all of my money back you know it wasn't like you trade in a $10,000 bike and they give you six for it um, I actually got every penny of it back so upgrading to the KTM from that bike was almost double the cost but you know it's double the bike not only in displacement but as far as suspension and everything else goes as well so definitely well worth it and uh, yep I am in full leathers and I'm still wearing a helmet um, just just to clarify for all of you LE guys out there is it illegal for me to drive with a motorcycle helmet on I mean I really don't know what a cop would say honestly like what could a cop actually say um, you're Vision's restricted? Okay, well then it's no more restricted right now than it is on a motorcycle. Dun dun dun. Or bum bum. I mean, <laughs> I don't, I, I would imagine it is actually probably illegal. Some days you just, you know, you just have those days, man, where it's like, it feels like you cannot catch a break, or you wake up and you feel like everything's going really, really smooth. And then out of nowhere, like everything just somehow turns to shit. Like everything that seems like it's going to be a good thing is horrible. <laughs> like I drove all the way to Auburn to get my tires done, got the bike torn apart. And they were like, oh, you know, we actually, we accidentally got the wrong tires. So I was like, all right, well, um, what are the chances you guys be able to order these pads for me? And they're like, oh, actually, you know what? We have these in stock. So I got, I got pads and I was like, hell yeah, you know, like, I thought it was going to suck having to go all the way up to Bellevue to get my brake pads, but turns out they have them in stock. So great. So I get home, do my brakes, my bike falls over and I'm like, oh my God. Okay. So F all of this, I'm going to go work on the 390 because I wanted to put new bars on it because the angle of the bars is like this for you guys who can't see it um, so after like 30 or 40 minutes of riding it my wrist starts doing this thing where like your hands fall asleep and get this thing going on you know and you're throwing up fucking random gang signs that you're not meaning to and um, so once I go put a set of pro tapers on uh, inch and an eighth bars and the for some reason KTM made their bars like just the tiniest bit smaller than an inch and an eighth so you can't use aftermarket bars you have to use their proprietary bars which are like the same exact shape except the other ones are anodized orange and it's like okay so I found that out after I cut grips off um, after I took all of the accessories and all of you know the switches and all that shit off and ultimately I ended up having to put my bike all back together um, without any upgrades and with one grip that I managed to find that <laughs> was like something that I took off I think like the ruckus or something so I have like half of a decent grip on there and the other side has nothing so um, yeah that was that was really frustrating uh, and then I hop on a KTM and decide, like, oh, hey, I'm going to go for a ride and go swoop up my wife on her 390. There it is. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, hey, I do not know how to ride in the rain on dirt tires. Well, I do, and it's called drifting, which is pretty much the only option that you have, which was super sketchy. So playing it safe because today doesn't feel like one of those days that I want to fuck with so she's seeing the full ensemble of what's happening right now I got the is this an Arai a Shoei or an AGV what am I wearing the Arai helmet the Dionysi jacket the KTM off-road adventure pants and then my Alpine Stars SMX 10s or whatever they are so rocking out in all kinds of ridiculous style this is what 
if you guys are five foot nine, I don't know if you can see our reflection. If you guys are five nine, shut up, I'm making a video. If you guys are five foot nine, this is what it looks like standing next to me. Actually, let's go show them inside. And yes, I do have to duck. All right, M's. So yeah, if you're five nine, this is what it looks like standing next to me. So she's gonna have a lot of questions for me and I'm not gonna have very many answers, but again, all welcome to the shop. Hope you enjoyed your stay. And that's gonna conclude this for now, unless of course I don't edit this until, uh, that was really gross. Unless of course I don't edit this until tomorrow, which I probably won't. So never mind. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow when I have new tires mounted and ready to go on and figure out how to... What is blinking over here? What's wrong with the water thing? What? Are we out of water? Oh. What do you mean? It was flashing red and blue, which is something that usually catches my attention. Alright. Love you guys. Bye. Shiny new Rosso 2 is ready to go on. My tub of grease, some paper towels, can of brake clean, and let's get this axle cleaned up a little bit more. Worked on that a tiny bit, but didn't do a hell of a lot. So I'm going to spray it down. So if you remember, this left side was the thin spacer. And the right side was the fat one that was dirtier. I'm actually going to leave the dirty side kind of dirty. Um, because it is different on one side than the other. And I don't want to put it in wrong. Of a cut. My direction is going the right way. And it is. You guys will notice that I do have a jack under my bike. It's not actually really touching or supporting anything, but it is there for my peace of mind. <laughs> More than anything really. Um, because again, the bike out of nowhere last night just decided to plop onto its belly. And I'm not having that happen again. So, getting these bushings in after a pretty liberal coat of grease. And the grease, more than anything right now, is um, there for keeping everything waterproofed. So now that my hands are all greasy, I'm going to get my axle prepped. And a lot of that blackness is actually just permanently burnt on color. Um, put this in a tumbler and that's about all that came off. So I'm going to call that good enough. A liberal coat of grease on your shaft. You see that that turned my gloves black, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rub my shaft again and get any of that excess goop off of there. It helps if you get the, the grease warm and it spreads it around the shaft a little bit better. So now I'm going to set my axle kind of in place, you guys can't see that. And I only have one glove left out here, so now this one. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. That would happen. All right, so being very careful. Work this up into place. Get my axle started through. Wiggle and jiggle. Carefully. 
wiggle and jiggle. And get everything lined up and not get my fingers under anything because, again, this bike apparently has a certain proclivity for falling on its own. So nothing else too exciting on this side, so I'll see you guys when I get to the rear wheel. Alright, so the rear axle calls for 270 newton meters of tightness. Um, but that's wet, meaning 270 newton meters of tightness against grease. Um, which is still an incredible amount. So, um, you wanna make sure that your rear axle is actually lubed really well because you will not get this axle nut off again if you don't. And I actually like putting a dab on each of these pins and just a little bit on the surface of where the tire is actually going to be touching. Just as kind of like, I don't know, a pseudo anti-seize. Before you even get the tire over here, I'm going to put a coat on this cone nut thing because it presses into the tire. And again, we want that to be distributed evenly. And then I'll actually do the outside surface of this and then I will do the inside surface of the actual nut itself but I won't go as far as to putting it on the threads because there's already some on the axle. So now, change my gloves again so I don't get grease on my brand new tires. Someone upstairs must know that I just got brand new tires because it just started hailing. Being careful going on as we were taking it off. We don't let the tire drag across those threads. Thunder. Fucking thunder. Of course that would happen as soon as I get new tires. I haven't heard thunder in a really, really long time. So I'm just getting this nut hand tight and I'm going to spin and tap with my palm as I'm spinning. Just to make sure that that's actually going on correct. Cool. And this is just ensuring that I'm seating everything down. Flush. And as I'm doing that, I can actually see the cone spinning. Evenly the whole way around as I'm tightening. Just one of those extra steps to make sure that you're as safe as possible. Thunder. 270 newton meters is equivalent to about 199 foot pounds force. So there you go. Uh, 200 foot pounds. Woo. I almost dropped this on the screen of my phone. Oh, well, I just made this video that much better. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. This actually goes up to 250 foot pounds which is impressive. So I'm going to start at 120 and then do my little smack dance around the tire. Okay, this one's 
20. Alright, now I'm gonna go up to and see if I can get it to 160 while it's on the ground. Can you guys see me? Well, there's 200. Ugh. Give birth to my kidney doing it that way. All right, so I'm gonna put the bike in gear. Okay. She's in first. There we go. All right, 200 foot pounds. So now something that's really important is I have to have a spot for this clip to go through one of those holes between one of these grooves. Hand poop. Okay. So you never loosen to get to where you need to be. That was 206 foot pounds. Let's see if that was any luck. There we go. Cool. So this is through. And then the ring has to go all the way around like that. And we can see it coming through. But I always take it a bit further. And give this a squeeze, like that, just to make sure that that's actually going through. And then I always, 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 always put a zip tie. I'll show you. So we cinch the zip tie down like that. And um, for those of you who are about to say use wire, I usually do, but. Um, Zip ties are lighter than a collective winding of wire and it throws the balance off less. So that's just what I do. You do you. Whatever makes you happy. But that zip tie blends and you can't really see it. So I don't really care. So that is going to conclude that part. And just wipe everything down because just like guns. Everything that has oil on it will attract dirt. Exhaust goes back on, and then I'll drop the bike down and show you guys in a second. Everything's looking all pretty. Everything's all torqued down. Everything's greased up. Torque specs were checked and double checked. Some sources online are actually saying 230 Newton meters. Um, my manual says 270, so I went to 270. Might have been overkill, but again, I've always done it to 270. So, uh, I don't know, but that is a wrap. Hope you guys maybe learn something, like, you know, have somebody else do your tires for you. <laughs> so all that's left is to take this bad boy for a ride. Get those new tires scrubbed in and um, <clears throat> maybe tomorrow.